Hello, and welcome to the Fantasy Survival Guide. My name is Mage, and today we're discussing the Griffin. Griffins are large fantasy creatures, usually being cat-bird hybrids. Most griffins have the rear and hind legs of a lion, and the front claws, head, and wings of a bird of prey. Various cultures have had different variations over the years. My personal favorite is the medieval European style, that being a mix of a lion and an eagle, both kings of their respective regions. In addition to different representations, some legends also differ between male and female griffins, the former either being called a kithong or a pinnacus. Males would usually lack the wings, occasionally having tusks or horns. The difference between kithongs and a pinnacus is actually in the legs, whether having all four legs or having a split between the eagle and the lion. If you were to count to a griffin in the wild, males would usually be about 3 to 400 pounds, about 9 feet long, and of course would lack the wings. Females would weigh about 2 to 300 pounds, and weigh about 7 feet long. By my best estimation, a griffin would actually have a wingspan of about 20 to 25 feet. There's actually a complicated discussion on how long the wingspan of a griffin should be. Uh, doing this some math, this is probably the best answer I could come up with. A very interesting discussion is I'm not entirely sure what type of lung a griffin has, whether it's avian or mammalian. If you ever do find out, please let me know. I'd love to find out for my next volume. The hardest griffin could strike is up to 400 pounds, and with their massive claws, whether that being the eagle or the lion legs, it could do a lot of damage. The fastest land griffin would be the Epinicus, reaching a speed of up to 50 miles per hour. The Keithog and the female griffin probably couldn't match this on the ground due to having the front eagle legs. However, with the wings, the Griffinus could probably outpace either the Keithong or the Epinicus. Historically, griffin-like representations really first appeared around 3 to 4,000 BC in ancient Iran and Egypt, and then spreading across the Mediterranean. A few prominent examples are on the Palace of Narsus on Crete, as well as wall paintings in Tel Adabi. It eventually spread over to Europe, where it became the most popular monster in heraldry, closely following its predecessors, the Lion and the Eagle, both being the most popular used beast and bird, respectively. Griffins denote strength, military courage, and leadership, and some legends also point out that griffins mate for life, leading to also being used as a symbol for marriage and devotion, especially in the church. Now where would you find a griffin? Griffins usually live in mountains and cliffs, commonly near gold mines or collections of rare stones, where they jealously guard these regions. They seem to collect these rare materials like gold or stones in their nests, and hide these nests in caves and cliffs. This makes it a prime target for thieves and adventurers. A good example is the Greek legend of the Aramaspi, where they seem to have conflicted with the griffins. They commonly battle with the griffins trying to steal their stones, riding upon horses. Now how would you even encounter a griffin? For the most part, griffins would actually leave humanoids alone, their prey being large mammals like deer, elk, etc. The issue is, if that mammal happens to be a farmer's cow or an adventurous horse they're sitting on. This is most likely the way you encounter a griffin, of you being a byproduct to the griffin hunting pattern. Now by my best guess, griffins would actually be stalking predators, similar to a lion. They would hunt quietly and carefully in the brush and shadows, waiting for the right moment to strike. Lions actually have very low stamina, only running for a few minutes before teetering out. The key thongs in the pinnacles would function similarly to a lion, the main difference being the massive beak and claws, usually tearing through a horse or a large mammal very fast. However, the most dangerous griffin, I think, is the female griffin, having the wings and being able to fly. Eagles have insane vision, so they could see their prey from over a mile out, and griffins could probably have this ability as well. They could see their prey from so far away, and then silently fly over, waiting for the right room to strike. The most dangerous way a female griffin could attack is by grabbing its prey and dropping it from a large height. Dropping their prey is a common habit among birds of prey, and I'm quite sure the griffin would replicate this. So most likely the griffin would find a target, lift it high in the air, and let gravity do the work. This is incredibly dangerous because there's not really much way to defend against this once you get picked up. The griffin probably couldn't lift a larger cow, bison, or elk, so they mostly go after the younglings, uh, babies, etc. If a humanoid is annoying enough, they could also be picked up. Good luck with it. Now how would you defend yourself against a griffin? Uh, I've done a lot of research into ancient lion hunting, and I've come up with a few ideas. If you're doing melee, the probably best weapon I'd pick is probably the spear or the halberd. Having that extra distance between you and the griffin would be incredibly helpful. I've seen plenty of freezes of lion hunting using spears. Unless, unless the griffin's magically guarded, like some sort of anemian lion, bladed weapons would be incredibly effective. Griffins are mostly flesh and bone, so blades could easily slice through. A few weapons I picked out would be the halberd, longsword, and maybe a pitchfork in the pinch. As long as you kept the point or blade in front of you, the griffin would have a hard time getting towards you without damaging itself. Now these melee weapons do suffer from one thing, and that's fighting the female griffin. Having the amount of having the ability to get out of distance and fly in the air is such a powerful ability. 
and you'd have such an issue with it. However, if you had the bow, that would be solved. Most images of freezes I've seen of lion hunting have involved the use of a bow, and it's such a powerful tool. A few good examples are the Assyrian Emperor Ashur Banapal, who had a lot of success with bows and arrows. Another one is Pharaoh Amenhotep, who apparently killed 102 lions over a decade period. Since the griffin's wingspan is about 25 feet, that's the literal size of a barn, which I'm sure any novice archer could hit. Additionally, the bow is a great utility tool, being used to hunt animals or sustain adventure as they're out exploring. The next thing I want to talk about in the adventurer's toolkit is sort of like fighting fire with fire, using a bird to fight a griffin. I'm talking about falconry, which could be incredibly useful in fighting a griffin. Falconry has a long history, not really being tied to any class or monetary status. Training a griffin to aid in attacking or irritating a griffin would be incredibly useful, either gouging its eyes out or attacking its wings, possibly grounding the griffin. If the griffin happens to get out of range of your bow or melee weapons, having the falcon could definitely be helpful to throw it up in the air and use it to track down the griffin. There's so many uses to having a falcon, you mean use for hunting or other things? It's such an interesting toolkit, I really want to discuss more. Uh, doing my research, I've actually found that falconry could actually be incredibly effective against so many fantasy creatures. Being trained in falconry could be incredibly helpful as an adventurer. So, for the most part, you probably never encounter a griffin, unless you're out hunting for it or happen to be aware of its hunting patterns. If you're interested in more info or just know someone who's hunting a griffin, I actually have this wonderful image I made for the actual fantasy survival guide. You can also find it here on my Ward Anvil website. Thank you for watching, adventurer, and good luck.